covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com Hey, greetings everyone. Welcome to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I am Michael R. Menenge. Oh, maybe you should have your name up there. There we go. That Yay. would help. And I'm Megan Zier. And I'm Sam Roberts. Awesome. Let's get some news. Yes, please. Your news team is next. So Sleepy Hollow premiered last week, and it got off to a great start. It debuted to 10.1 million viewers. Wow. Yes. And that well, number, it was really hyped. It was really hyped. They even dropped a mention of it in the Bones premiere, which airs right before, by well, the way. I, I love <laughs> the fact that they started going to uh, from the creators of Star Trek right? in order to really drive viewership, <laughs> too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that, by the way, that 10.1 million number doesn't include DVR numbers, so it's mm. going to get bigger. And the show is getting even cooler because the news is that former Fringe actor and favorite of Slice, John Noble, is joining the show. Ooh. Yes. Now, he has a major recurring role. He's not going to be a regular, but he'll be in several episodes. Details are thin, but what we can reveal is he'll play a man called Henry Parrish, who is described as a kind of as a kind and reclusive man who possesses supernatural powers that have the potential to help Ichabod Crane. Ooh. Okay. So if you guys didn't watch it, they are doing a, a spin-off on the Sleepy Hollow mythology that really messes with it. So if you're a Sleepy <laughs> Hollow purist of any kind, you won't like it. Because well, there's an Ichabod, Ichabod Crane and there's a Headless Horseman and that's pretty much it. That was the one thing that really bothered me about the whole thing because, yeah. uh, and it always has been the problem with the Headless horse, Horseman and the Ichabod tr- Crane tale. It is such a divergence of what the original was. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it truly is it, it truly is a brutal and really nasty story. Yeah. If you go to the roots of what it is, hmm. I mean, it's I- I- Ichabod Crane is kind of bu- a buffoon, and they're basically <laughs> torturing him and and uh, making fun of him. Yeah. And it's, it's not a good story. And this is very <laughs> different. The Ichabod Crane in this show is not a buffoon. He's smart and hot. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we can also tell you that former True Blood and the Cape star, who's also, by the way, recurring on Grimm, James Frain, will join the cast for a multi-episode arc as Rutledge. His character will press Crane about his time-traveling life. We don't know yet if Sleepy Hollow can sustain its early momentum in terms of both ratings and the series itself. But how can adding these two guys help? I mean, John Noble, mm-hmm. James Frain, yeah. sweet. I, you know, I don't know. Did you guys see it? I have not watched it yet. I'm kind of, I'm, I've am i been seeing the <laughs> early reviews on it, and I'm not excited. For me, so. it's like Arrow when I first watched it, in which it has some great characters and cool um, chemistry between them, mm-hmm. but there mm-hmm. is there were some cheesy moments, and there's a lot of exposition. Right. So it's any first episode for something like this can be awkward, so I'm going to see how it goes. I tentatively like it. There's a lot the- of exposition for Sleepy Hollow. I swear to God. And, <laughs> and, Sleepy Hollow. And, and very <laughs> minor. American literature, Sleepy Hollow. Very minor spoiler. There's a, a witch from 250 years ago who wears way too much makeup. That <laughs> 250 years ago, they didn't. She doesn't have the full face with the eyeliner and the mascara and the blush. And the well, lipstick, what about but, Cleopatra? She had a lot of makeup, and that was way longer ago. <sighs> yeah, but really. Well, also, she's yeah. a in witch. In the colonies, like she's modern a witch. makeup. Modern makeup. I'm just it's saying. Satan. It's Guys, Satan. just tone it down a little. It's not hard. It's not hard it's to Satan tone it down makeup. a little. Like, co- um, yeah, like so, colored up floozy. I tell that's you. That's right. That. That's why they thought she was a witch. Oh, yeah. Go. But you can't go wrong with John Noble. And speaking of, don't we have a little bit of voice, uh, we do, video voicemail action? I think so. Fringe related. Hello, Slicers. Two things I want to share with you. So firstly, thanks to you, I have spent some money on this. I have never, ever seen this series before in my life. But you've gone on about it so much, I had some spare money and decided... I'm going to give it a go. So it better be good. I shall let you know. Secondly, something that's coming out uh, in October in the States appears to have already been released over here. Um, and that's these Starship models. Um, now, I thought they'd be really tacky, if I'm honest, when I saw them advertised. But I'm really genuinely impressed. So the level of detail on these models is absolutely amazing. I don't think my phone's going to focus on it properly for you. But, you know, you can. It, it's really, really, really good. I thought they'd be cheap and nasty plastic. Um, and they're not. They're chunky, solid, beautifully well-designed ships. I've also got, you might recognise this little fella, 
Um, and you can even see the, the United Federation of Planets written in there. So it's absolutely beautiful. Um, very, very surprised how good they are. And uh, I hope you guys like them as well. Bye bye. Wow. Those, those look are, great. Those look fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to have to get my hands on that. But <laughs> you will love Fringe. Yeah, no pressure. Uh, we, uh, we're confident uh, in our recommendation. Yeah, I, I, I'm so confident you'll love Fringe that I, I'll buy your copies if you don't like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was an expensive one. It was Blu-ray, complete no, series. Oh, no, worth it. It'd be worth every cent. <laughs> All right. So next up, no one would ever be able to say the world of Restoros is a nice place to live. Mm -hmm. Betrayal, carnage, destruction, death. All just part of living in the fictional universe created by author George R. R. Martin. But Martin has recently decided that maybe Westeros doesn't have a big enough bad guy, and he wants to do something about that, if you can believe it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And he was inspired by the final episodes of Breaking Bad. <laughs> okay, well, I'm <laughs> Which good with that. Which starts to make sure. more sense now. Martin recently wrote on his blog that Walter White is a bigger monster than anyone in Westeros, and that he would have to stay, take steps to do something about that. Oh, Oh. I gotta say, I'm only I'm only in season two on Breaking Bad, okay. and so I've I've read a lot about it. I've been a little spoiled, so I understand it gets heinous. So, um, wow, if he's worse than, than people in Westeros, I mean, think about it. Think about what they did to um, oh, what's his name from the you know with the torture and the this season with the chopping off of the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know somebody's worse. Wow. That's if you're watching the final increase. episodes of Breaking Bad, you know this is bad news for everybody in Westeros. Our question is, will Martin have an already established character go more bad, or will we get a new bad guy in the in the next book or two? Mm, Good I question. Just, I'm just How do you go more bad in West? I don't understand. Uh, I, I don't know either, but uh, um, Martin's got a lot of writing to do. I'm hoping he's doing it. <laughs> Stop posting on your blog. <laughs> That's right. You need to write. Stop, right, watching. Man. Stop watching Breaking Bad. <laughs> That's right. You don't have time oh. to watch Breaking Bad. You need to no. write. <laughs> we don't mean it. I'm okay. I still need to catch up. So you take your time he's allowed to have a life <laughs> uh, hey i think it's a good time to do some trivia put on your thinking caps kids and play along with the gang hey it's trivia time well hello slicers it's kurt in st george Hi, kurt. this week we're starting a two-part slice of Ooh, trivia about hard. comic books no uh -oh. we're not going to mention movies or television shows based Oops. on comic book characters though you will hear the names of some characters mentioned a little confused? Mm -hmm. You won't be for long. Here comes the first clip. And what are the characteristics of Clark Kent? Oh. He's weak. <laughs> I He's love this. Of himself. This is one of my favorite exposés in, in uh, um, yeah. I know, we've had arguments. Awesome. I love this. And the longer version. What Kent wears, the glasses, the business suit, that's the costume. That's the costume Superman Kill wears him. to blend in with oh, us. Oh, It's a yeah. second one, part two. Clark Kent is how Superman views us. Huh. And what are the characteristics of Clark Kent? He's weak. He's unsure of himself. He's a coward. Clark Kent is Superman's critique on the whole human race. Wow. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> I love that. I, uh, I love that. I, I love the that analogy. That was David it, Carradine yeah. as Bill in Quentin Tarantino. That was like my least favorite part of the whole movie. Bill. I was really? so mad All the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, you don't know Clark Kent. <laughs> but he's a bad guy, the so. Yeah. It was this one issue that brought it back for me. Century Comics 117. Oh, that's, that's Unbreakable. That's, um, evil, you know, Jules. Uh, Samuel. Samuel L. Jackson in Unbreakable. Yeah. Have one. I love that movie. Here's the longer version. David, it's Elijah. It was so obvious. It was this one issue that brought it back for me. Century Comics 117. That's where this group, the Coalition Not a bad of Evil, M. Night to like that. It may be my favorite. I, I, mean, I really I get like that Why Six Sense is so, like I mean, is really good, but this may be my balls favorite. Don't break. Mm -hmm. Mine do. That's clear. And then it all was down Your cells from react there. to bacteria <laughs> and viruses differently yeah. than mine. You don't get sick. I do. That's also clear. But for some reason, you and I react the exact same way to water. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good movie. Ugh. That was Samuel L. Jackson in M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable from 2000. I wanted a sequel. For our final example yeah. of the day, I'm going to give you two separate clips. Here comes the first one now. Did you know about this? I, uh, I might have dreamt about it. And he didn't tell us. It was too preposterous. Not to mention arrogant. I mean, writing yourself into the story is one thing, but as a prophet... Oh, supernatural. That's like oh. M. Night-level douchiness. <laughs> yes, M. Night-level douchiness. <laughs> I love that. Supernatural. That was Dean. 
And uh, what's his and name? And the second clip. Yeah. <laughs> and what's his name? Reading. Gets better. The guy who writes the supernatural right. novels. In There's them. Sam girls and Dean girls, and what's a slash fan? <laughs> As in Sam slash Dean <laughs> together. <laughs> Together, together? <laughs> they do know we're brothers, right? It doesn't matter. Oh, they don't care. That, that's just sick. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that show is so funny. <laughs> okay, the first clip featured Jensen Ackles and Rob Benedict. The second clip, Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles. In an episode of Supernatural from the fourth season in 2009, titled The Monster at the End of This Story. In this episode, Sam and Dean find out there's an author who's been writing about their lives in novel and graphic novel and form. And there's fans. Well, that's yeah. all for part <laughs> so one of Comic Book Reference a... Trivia. You'll hear part two next time. Until then, Kurt from St. George signing off. Thanks, wow, Kurt. Wow, that was a great episode. Supernatural like does a lot of fun fan stuff. They, they yeah. did an episode where those two were LARPing with Felicia Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> <laughs> the best ever. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Oh, very cool stuff. Thank you so much, Kurt. Uh, we're going to take a quick break um, with the uh, con report and uh, come back right after this. This week's con report is brought to you by Geek Nation Tours. Find out more at geeknationtours.com. Hello, Slicers. This is Catherine in Tucson. I haven't heard you mention this, and I didn't even know if you were aware that it exists, but this year, the Brown Coat Ball, which is an event for Firefly fans, it includes like a shindig uh, ball um, on Saturday night, is going to be in Phoenix. It moves to a different city every year, so uh, I thought you guys might like to know about it, since it'll be in your city. Um, let's see, it's October 4th, 5th, and 6th this year, uh, so the weather should be nice, but uh, just in case you didn't know about it, and the listeners didn't know about it, in case you were interested, it sounds like a lot of fun to me. Sliceofsci-fi.com and that's very cool. Cool stuff. I like that. Uh, we'll have to check that out and see if uh, we can find out a little bit more about the uh, brown coat thing. But uh, let's do some uh, Let's do some uh, uh, slice on the horizon. Absolutely. So it looks like the zombie uprising won't end anytime soon on AMC. The cable outlet is reportedly developing a spinoff to their monster hit, The Walking Dead. Series creator Robert Kirkman will be involved in the spinoff, and word has it that AMC would like it to shamble onto our screens <laughs> in 2015. Very cool. Yay. Yes. AMC president Charlie Collier says that developing a companion piece to TV's highest rated scripted show is a no-brainer. No kidding. Mm. And no-brainer because your brains have been eaten, by the uh, way. Ha, 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 ha. Funny. Yeah. Well, um, oh, well, well, you, uh, we can also tell you that ABC is ready to bring us more of the Marvel Studio Universe on a weekly basis. The network is developing a series based on the short film Agent Carter, which was on the Iron Man 3 DVD and Blu-ray. Deadline reports the short as an inspiration for a potential series and that Marvel and ABC are looking for a showrunner and producer. And then finally, Sci-Fi wants to get in the kaiju monster business. The cable outlet is developing a new series called Creature Attack, which will follow the month and weeks of a small town in the wake of a monster attack. Okay. It has Brian Singer attached as producer, and the pilot script is by John Cabrera, the writer of the wonderful H Plus digital series. Ooh. That's one to keep an eye on. Interesting. Well, that's a few things that are out there on the horizon. I've uh, got one little comment here that I wanted to just throw in here just Alrighty. so we can chat about this as we go out. Did you guys see the uh, series finale of Continuum? No, I'm behind. No, not yet. I was not expecting that to end this way. <laughs> Holy shit. That was just crap. Totally I'm super behind. I'm behind too. Right mm -hmm. from left field, boy. Those writers came right. I am so looking forward. To I can't that, believe though. we have to wait till next year. Ooh, yeah. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> and I've been seeing nothing but buzz oh. about that ever since it was uh, the, since it aired. Everybody's talking about it, saying it's amazing. I'm so glad I didn't start the season yet. Um, <laughs> I don't I'm have going it. To wait. I'm so far behind. I caught the first season on Netflix uh -huh. because I when it first aired, I was like, eh, and then mm. I didn't get to it, and then I heard it was getting really good, and so uh -huh. I went and I saw the first scene on Netflix, and now I'm so behind, and I want to know. Yeah. I know. I'm only I'm only like three episodes behind, right. so I'm this close to catching 
question up, so I feel bad. I could have commented. But. I, I, I've seen a couple of the episodes. I, I saw the first two episodes of this season, and I went, okay, I'm stopping right there <laughs> because I know it's going to get great at the end, and damn it, that's, it did. Yeah. <laughs> it exactly did, and that's the exact reason why I stopped. I'm going to wait and get it all oh, on Netflix. Oh, you're going to wait for next season? As soon as oh, it starts there on you Netflix. Go. That's and smart. Then, that way, then I can go straight from that and get So you don't have to smart. wait, but you got to avoid spoilers. Good luck with that, well, buddy. Well, I'm already spoiled a little bit because everybody's Don't been share. going. Don't and share. And speaking of spoilers, yes. um, another, did you hear that, uh, um, I, I, I can't remember who it was, if it was CNN or whoever, one of the news agencies actually spoiled Dexter, which oh, is yeah. tonight oh, for us. Oh, shut up. They really? spoiled it because I, they I put, didn't listen. They put all the de- all the people, the victims of de- who's been on Dexter's table on the list. The and it was somebody who hasn't died yet. Has somebody that hasn't died <laughs> oh, that's going to die oh. in the episode no. tonight. I yeah. am so pissed off. Oh, idiots. <laughs> I, know. I know. It's like, oh, <gasps> you've got to be kidding me. I know. So I am so, as soon as we're done recording, uh-huh. that yeah, is Dexter. my evening tonight <laughs> yeah. is, is the season finale of, of Dexter. So now you know when we were recording. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. Uh, we all anyway. miss Dexter for you guys. And and I'm so bummed that Dexter's over after this. It's eh. been such an interesting season. Uh, it's time. The it's guy, time. I'm not I bummed. So. The guy I'm who played bummed. the ice truck killer, right, mm-hmm. early on in Dexter, um, just showed up on Haven as um, Duke Crocker's brother. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. And he's playing a nice awesome. guy, and I'm having a oh. hard time with it. Like, he's like, <laughs> regular dude. And I'm no, like, no, that's I'm not right. I'm pretty sure he's going to start he's cutting creepy. people up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Starts running around and starts hacking happen. people up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> starts painting mannequin yeah. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for this show. Thanks, everyone. It uh, was real short and sweet this week, but uh, we got uh, things knocked out that was important we got we got done what we needed to do that's right and that's what it's all about so if you like what we're doing follow us on facebook uh definitely on twitter uh we're everywhere you know where to go check out the website slice sci-fi.com it'll take you all the places sci-fi 